uh, 14,000 uh, cabin crew um, and 3,500 flight crew. Cabin crew are the people you see uh, in uniform on the day delivering great customer service on board the aircraft, those uniformed staff. They're not normally working together. Uh, every flight you see, those people are working in a team, they've never met each other. Uh, and they're rostered to work together, they come together for a single flight or set of flights uh, and then they break apart and work with other teams. They also live in lots of far-flung places around the world and they, a lot of them are working part-time. So um, it means that they may be working for a month and then not working for a month and then working the next month. It's a continual challenge for us with such a large industrial workforce to communicate, in particular how to communicate uh, two-way. We've been, become very, very good at doing one-way top-down communication, but two-way was eluding us. We hit on the idea of using a forum. It's pretty common technology out on the internet, um, but not something we'd ever tried internally. And of course, with something new, there are lots of people saying a lot of different things could go wrong. And, um, but we said, it's such an important challenge, we've got to try everything we can to improve two-way communications. We had a key issue that we wanted to uh, engage in a two-way dialogue with our people on, which was pension changes. Uh, we launched them about December 06. And uh, Take Up uh, was very, very good. I mean, particularly the flight crew community. Um, people in BA have a great alignment to customers and to the BA brand. That's a lot of the reason why people join BA, is to deliver great customer service and be part of a fantastic brand. When things go wrong and when things don't work out right for customers, people really care and they get worked up about it. And um, I was looking this morning at, uh, just this morning to, to prepare for this session about what active threads are on the, on the discussion database. Uh, I discovered that uh, plastic cups that we use uh, in, in, uh, in Europe for handing out drinks uh, appear to be quite difficult to take apart, because you know they come in a stack, very difficult to take apart, and they're cracking sometimes uh, when we're handing them out. And um, a huge amount of activity on this just yesterday uh, on the discussion forum. It's not good enough, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to improve things. And uh, the general manager responsible for uh, the cups is on the thread saying, we have a session with the supplier tomorrow. This sounds really serious. We have just changed suppliers. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the quality of the cups. And uh, there was also a very active discussion about uh, how we can make the ice cube to break up more easily to get the right amount of ice in people's cup. And um, it even surprised me that people are online discussing, to be honest, uh, how we can get the right size piece of ice and getting into supply ice suppliers at the other end of route don't have the same machinery uh, that we have at Heathrow to deliver cubed ice and then what are the ways that you can break the ice up when you're in the air, in the cabin, to get the right size lumps of ice for people's drinks to make them a great drink. So uh, that's the kind of detail. Anything is happening like this in first class, we would take it extremely seriously. One crew member I noticed last, uh, last Christmas went on uh, the forum and said, does anyone know if the vegetable soup is made with vegetable stock or meat stock? I was asked by a customer, I didn't know the answer. And uh, a few other uh, crew members also piped up onto the same uh, thread and said, I've been asking this question for a long time, I wish I knew the answer. Customers are always asking me, please, 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 somebody who knows the answer. A few days later, uh, a catering manager went online, saw the thread and said, I don't know the answer either, but I'm going to talk to our supplier. Uh, a few days after that, uh, came back and said, you know what, it's vegetable soup, it's vegetable stock. And um, what, what I found really heartwarming about the whole story was there was an awful lot of really positive feedback then in the thread immediately saying, isn't this great, we're working as a team, uh, it really feels like people are responding, and when we're out there delivering service, we know the people back in the office are working with us and really trying to help uh, because sometimes it feels like nobody's listening to what we're doing. And the really nice postscript to the story was a uh, first class purser uh, went online about a month later and said, guess what everybody, the menus have changed. So we hadn't just answered those six, ten people who'd been involved in that discussion thread, we did answer the question for every uh, customer and improved our service, that little percentage point, uh, which is what we're trying to do every day. The very first challenge was 
people feeling uncomfortable, particularly management and owners of processes feeling uncomfortable, that they're suddenly a lot more visible. And to solve that, I think we've had some great role models. I mean, great support from the leadership team, our board of directors, who have hosted quite a number of live web chats, which have been really successful. Uh, and they've talked about things um, that, you know, very difficult topics, how we're going to make cost savings, uh, and so on. And their own tone and style is not that they have ghostwriters writing answers. They sit there and type in uh, into the forum. And, it, and everyone can see that. And, uh, and we've had great feedback. And I think that's given the layers of middle management some encouragement and some confidence that they can participate in this and they're not going to get shot down. I think it's pretty clear that the first ingredient you need for a successful forum is a real reason for people to talk to each other. I'd like to say it was something magic we'd done, but we had uh, a situation where people needed to, needed to talk uh, there was a desire to talk and there, there wasn't an easier way of doing it. Um, I think also though we've done, we've worked really hard to uh, look at what other people are doing, looking at what works on the internet and what doesn't. Um, and the moderators in every area have done a fantastic job of uh, helping the discussion along in every way they can and thinking of new ways uh, of using it. We need to make sure that you have uh, top level senior support for doing it because it's going to rattle a few cages and uh, you need that support from the beginning. The other thing is uh, you need to be pretty consistent. Things are uh, pretty soon, pretty quickly, if you've got any success at all, are going to suddenly start mushrooming the volume of activity the difficult questions are going to come out pretty soon. And I think the community, uh, if it's anything like our community, will want to test out the system. OK, there's a two-way communication here, and we can, we can uh, ask anything and suggest anything. Let's see what they think about this, uh, I think might go through some people's heads. So the way you act in the first few weeks is quite important. Take the point seriously, uh, be robust, follow your policy, follow your procedures, uh, and, and follow through.